Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the new Motorola Moto G30. It's the beginning of a new chapter for Motorola and a new naming pattern. They're going up in double digits for the Moto G series. And they also changed the box design, so it opens up like this now. You don't just lift up a lid, you just pop it open from the side. Okay, so the Moto G30 feels familiar in some ways. It adopts some elements from the Moto G9 series and a pretty interesting backside. Now the price should be around $200, maybe less in some countries, and we have a bundled case, as usual, and a very interesting color. Some may call it purple, it's actually a weird purple, it's uh, eggplant combined with uh, gasoline, that's what I like to call it. And the camera design feels quite a bit like the one of the Moto G9 Plus and the Moto G9 Power. This is plastic, but a quite well built one, it's pretty thick. Uh, and doesn't feel shallow as it feels on some other phones. I've already set up the device, saved some minutes and as it boots, let's see what's inside the box. It's a pretty compact box, which opens up in a new fashion. One would call it more intricate than before. And here we have the manuals and the key used to access the slots. the inevitable uh, animation and uh, logo and here we have the charger with an USB-A connector and the promise of let's see here I'm squinting and find that it charges the device at 20 watts okay and finally the cable this cable goes from uh, USB-C to USB-A let's see if there are headphones here there's extra room nope no headphones it's a pretty weird box, it's a new design, I'm thinking it's more compact now, that's what companies are striving for, keeping the boxes more compact, saving the planet, that's the core idea. Okay, let's focus on the handset for now, as far as the first impressions are concerned, the device feels like it keeps the identity of the Moto G9 series before it, at least camera design wise. A brand new color, I don't even know what to call it, officially we have Phantom Black and Pastel Sky. Those are the hues for the Moto G30. Okay, let's turn down the volume a little bit. And um, one good news for this device, aside from the fact that the screen seems to be quite bright, is the fact that Moto has put on it a special uh, water repellent coating it's actually not a premiere, they've been doing that even on lower priced phones, but it's nice to see they're keeping this approach. The thickness is 9.1 millimeters, quite hefty, and it's a 200 gram phone. It does not feel heavy because it's quite long, so the weight gets well distributed. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, this one is an IPS LCD, even though some sources say it's a TFT LCD. Actually, the official press release from uh, Motorola says uh, TFT IPS LCD, so the truth is somewhere in the middle. 6.5 inch, uh, actually 90 hertz refresh rate, that's surprising, and uh, 1600 over 720 pixel resolution, and a 20 to 9 elongated aspect ratio. Now, inside, we're going to find a familiar friend of ours. It's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 662, not 65, the 662 11 nanometer octa-core CPU, which you're going to see these days on the Xiaomi Redmi uh, 9T, Poco M3, and the Moto G9 Power. The device comes with two versions of RAM, 4 or 6 gigs, we're lucky enough to have the 6 gig version, and the storage has a single version, 128 gigabytes, plus microSD, which is shared with the same slot. Now the battery is, I would say, pretty generous, we're dealing with a 5000 mAh unit with a 20 watt charging. And if you look at the bottom of the phone, you're going to find a pretty generous set of speaker here, the actual uh, lone speaker, the USB-C port and a microphone, at the top side audio jack and microphone, and on the sides here we have the uh, slots accessible via metal key, and these are the buttons. Uh, Weirdly enough, we have an extra button, so this uh, ribbed one is the power button, this long one is the volume button, and this one, I'm guessing, should be, yes, the Google Assistant button. Uh, the Google Assistant button usually gets placed here, so that's a change. Not sure how comfy it is to find it like that. There's always, hey, Google, if you want to replace that button. Okay, so I promise to cameras, uh, the front side in a teardrop notch rests a 13 megapixel uh, shooter well the back side i think it's a bit of a surprise that we're getting a 64 megapixel main camera not bad uh, which is accompanied by 
face detection autofocus, 8 megapixel ultra wide shooter, 2 megapixel macro, 2 megapixel bokeh in a quad camera setup, which has an LED flash here. I would love to inform you that we have uh, well 4K capture. We do not have 4K capture, sadly, only full HD at 60 frames per second. This is a dual SIM phone, it also comes a single SIM version, and I think we've covered everything there is to say about it. I just tested the fingerprint scanner and it seems like a bit of a hit and miss. You're advised to keep the finger like that, not at 75 degrees or 90 degrees. Anyways, you get the idea. We have Wi-Fi dual band available here. And uh, let's see what else. FM radio seems to be part of the package. There's Bluetooth 5.0. We also get GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, NFC, USB-C 2.0. And I already covered the fingerprint scanner at the back side. One piece of good news is that we're getting here Android 11 in a pretty close to stock experience. So that's nice to see. And uh, Motorola's only contribution to the experience is the Moto app, which comes with several personalizing options, which you can see here. You can get started with your fonts, colors, icon shapes, layout, and probably a few more. Now, aside from that, we have interactive wallpapers. We have a bunch of gestures quite a lot of them actually. There is the display section with options for peak display and tent display and even some features for the gamers, including audio effects, which we've seen on quite a few Motorola phones. As usual, a quick glance at the camera interface. We don't expect many changes here. Okay, so jumping to ultra wide, jumping to macro like this. The extras are here, you got your spot color, panorama, live filter, cutout, cinemagraph, full resolution 64 megapixel shots, night vision, portrait, group selfie, and pro mode. The video includes spot color, time lapse, and slow motion. This is the video section. Let's see if I was lying before when I was talking about the resolution. So when it comes to shooting video, I think we actually have the options here. Okay, so frame rate can be set to 30 or 60 frames per second and from what I see there is no option for resolution so you're stuck with full HD. Okay, so far so good, the device feels pretty snappy and adding to the snappiness is the fact that we get a high refresh rate which I want to actually confirm here in the settings. So go to the display, go to advanced, display refresh rate, it's set to auto but you can also set it to 60 or 90 hertz for a smooth experience. Okay, that's about it. The start of a new chapter. The Moto G series is entering double digits. Moto G30, G100, and even triple digits. Who knows? It's going to be a long series. Moto has already sold hundreds of millions of Moto G phones all over the world, and it wants more. This is from gsnon.com. Don't forget the price around $200, maybe less. We'll be back with a full review before you know it. Bye-bye.